In this video, we're going to cover the concept of implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation, actually, we're not going to introduce any new theorems or anything like that, but we're going to show you how we differentiate things that aren't simply functions. We will need the chain rule to do this, and you'll see the use of it very soon. The two examples I want to start off with are this quadratic right here and this circle right here. If we're using this equation right here, which is a function, this is a quadratic parabola, obviously upward facing. If we look at a graphical representation here, it's what we'd expect. This equation over here is not a function. It's a circle with a radius six centered at two comma zero. And we know this is not a function, A, because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but specifically it's not a function because there's inputs in here that have more than one output. The method of implicit differentiation is really for attacking equations like this that aren't functions and your y hasn't been explicitly defined in terms of your other variable. So quickly, real fast, let's talk about this. We know what we're doing, but I wanna compare the work to this equation right here. If we want to find dy dx at two comma nine, well, we simply would find dy dx by using the power rules here to get uh, 8x minus 6. Then if we want to find dy dx, what we're going to do is just plug in the 2 to this equation to find at x equals 2, dy dx equals 8 times 2 is 16, minus 6 is 10. This 10 is the slope of the tangent line at this point on this equation. One thing to point out, and this will be an important difference between functions and then relations that aren't functions, is that when I go to find dy dx, it actually wasn't necessary that I knew the output or the y value here. To find dy dx, I simply will need the input. What you're gonna find is when I find dy dx for these kind of relationships, I actually will need to know the x value and the y value, and that should make sense. Why I need to know the y value is because for these relations, often your inputs have multiple y values, right? So the question will be, is it, is it this output point that I'm looking at or this output point that I'm looking at? And again, that wasn't necessary here because every input only had one output. In this case, seven, there's two different values um, that are connected to seven in this relationship. All right, let's get right to it. If I want to find dy tx for this relationship right here, what I'm going to do, as we've always done, is differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. This feels different because we don't have one side of our equation equal to y. So the question is, well, where does the dy dx show up when we differentiate? And that's a really important part here. So this process is going to feel a lot different as we differentiate here because we're not set equal to y. And so we're going to follow all the differentiation rules. What you're going to see is that the chain rule comes in in a way that you haven't seen it before because of how we attack this y squared. Before I go any further, know that y squared is a variable that is affected by x. That's really important for when we differentiate this term. I can't treat y squared as a constant as previously discussed in other videos. I have to differentiate this using the chain rule. But before we get into all that mess, let's do the easy side first. The derivative of 36 is just zero. That's an easy work to do, that's just a constant. Now when we differentiate this, we're gonna apply the chain rule to this term right here. I'm gonna bring the two down and multiply it by x minus two. Take one away from the two to get a one. Then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of x minus two. Now I'm going to differentiate y squared, and I'm going to treat this exactly like I just did this last term. I'm going to bring the 2 down and take 1 away, and so this will give me 2y. But the chain rule in this case then says I need to differentiate this inner function, or y in this case. So the derivative of y is simply dy dx. This signals a really important change in how we think about differentiation. And when again, we're using the chain rule here. What I did was I differentiated around this expression y, right? So I took the two down and took one away, just dealing with that square right there. But then I need to differentiate the inner function. In this case, that inner function is y. Both 
of these factors in these terms right here are for the exact same reason. I differentiated around some kind of expression, and now I need to differentiate that inner expression. Before I go any further, I want to just talk more about this move because this is the most important part that really confuses a lot of people. The question could be, well, why do we got to do this with y? Why didn't we ever do this with x? Well, actually, in fact, well, there's two reasons. First is, is because x is the variable that you're differentiating with respect to. So there's no actual chain rule needed when you have x. Or the better explanation, I think, is if you have something like x squared, you actually could and should think about applying the chain rule to this, though you'll see it won't be very necessary. If we differentiate this with respect to x, what we'll do is differentiate around the x right here first to get 2x to the 1 power. And then we will multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to x though the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. The derivative of x is 1, right? So the idea is this actually doesn't affect anything, and we'll just end up getting 2x. So I'll we'll move on from this, but I just want to emphasize that point. This is actually a correct way of thinking about this and using the chain rule, though if you're differentiating an expression that just has the variable that you're differentiating with respect to, there's no need to write this factor because it will always just be 1. That's not the same case here. When I'm differentiating this with respect to a variable that isn't y, but that y still changes in, with the respect to x, I need to differentiate. I can't treat it as a constant. I apply the chain rule around the variable, and then I differentiate the inner variable. All right, let's get back to this now and finish this example. So in this first term right here, the derivative of x minus 2, well, that's just 1, right? Because that's a constant. It goes to 0. The derivative of x is 1. So this first term just becomes 2 times x minus 2. Over here, there's nothing to do. I have, again, I don't know the derivative of y with respect to x. By the way, this is what I'm going to solve for in the end because that's what I'm trying to find. And so I get 2y dy dx equals 0. Now all I need to do to, is I'm going to solve this for dy dx so then I can plug in my x and y value. Actually, at this point, to be honest, I could plug in my x and y value here of 7 in the square root of 11, though I always like to first solve for this. So what I'm going to do is subtract this term from both sides. I'm then going to divide by the 2y to get the dy dx by itself. Then we can obviously cancel this factor of 2 between the numerator and denominator to give us the expression that dy dx equals negative x minus 2 over y. As said previously, as we should expect with these types of equations that are not functions, our derivative of y with respect to x includes the x and the y value, and that was why it was important to have the x and y value before. That example I had with the parabola, right? The derivative was 8x minus 6. It didn't need the y value to output that slope of the tangent line. Finally then, cleaning this up, this will give me a negative 5 over the square root of 11. If I wanted to, I could rationalize the denominator here by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 11. May not be necessary. We might just want a decimal approximation. And I won't show that step, but just show if you know how to rationalize that denominator, we would get negative 5 square root 11 over 11, which would be our fully simplified. All right, so there we have it, the first example of implicit differentiation. This move right here should be the part that pisses you off the most, but you'll get used to that as we move forward. You might be asking questions like why that hasn't come up before, but again, the statement is we've only dealt with functions. When we deal with these relations that aren't functions, this will have to happen often. And finally, just to make sure we understand what we did right here, here's now a graphical representation again of this circle we talked about. What we found here at dy dx at 7 comma the square root 11 was the slope of that tangent line. And I know I brought it up a few times, but it's important to point out that at x equals 7, there are actually two different outputs that would have different slopes based on the different y values we'd plug into this equation.